थैंक यू सो मच फॉर वॉचिंग आई विल सपोर्ट टू यू गेटिंग यूर डिजायर बैंड स्कोर इन यूर आई एस एग्जाम इफ यू नीड ए प्रडिक्शन मटीरियल यू कैन चेक माई इंस्टाग्राम पेज लिंक अवेलेबल इन ए डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स ऑल ओवर प्रूफ ऑफ प्रीवियस एग्जाम यू कैन सी हेयर रीडिंग प्रडिक्शन राइटिंग स्पीकिंग हंड्रेड परसेंट फ्रॉम अवर प्रडिक्शन मटीरियल एंड दिज यूट्यूब चैनल ओनली फॉर यू एंड एवरी डे आई विल अपलोड लिसनिंग प्रडिक्शन वीडियोज फॉर यूर इम्प्रूवमेंट्स If you need prediction material, then you can drop me message on my WhatsApp number. WhatsApp number you can see on your screen nine eight seven six five seven double six nine five, and tell me about your name, your exam date, and your location, and I will send you accurate prediction material like reading, listening, writing, and speaking. Must comment your bad score in comment section. from the college receptionist first you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5 now the test will begin You should answer the questions as you listen as you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 1 to 5. Sorry to keep you waiting. <laughs> okay. Here's the information you need. On the first page there's some info about the college, the facilities, the courses on offer, etc. Uh-huh. Then on these blue pages here there's an outline of the social activities. You see there, okay? Yes. Now this part of the booklet here, the yellow pages, that's the main program starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow. 9 a.m., okay. So all the new students will be gathering in Herville Hall at nine o'clock. Uh, sorry, where? Herville Hall. I'll spell it for you. It's H E R V I double L, and then H A double L for hall, of course. It's the big white building by the entrance. Okay, I've seen it. Right. Anyway, you'll be in there for an hour. First, the director of studies will explain the various courses we offer and the requirements for them. Then, for the second half hour, the social organizer will tell you more about the social program and Saturday excursions. Is that all clear? Um. Yes, I think so. Then, where do I go after that? Ah, yes. Okay. After the talks in the hall, there's a break. And then at quarter to eleven, go to classroom four to have a placement test. Quarter to eleven. This placement test is to find my level in English. Exactly. Then after the test, all the new students are invited to a special welcome lunch. In the cafeteria? No, no, not for the welcome lunch. It's in a restaurant near the school, an Indian restaurant. Oh, okay. I don't think I've ever tried Indian food. Do you like spicy food? Yes, I do. Then you'll love Indian. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. So, where's the Indian restaurant? Don't worry, it's really easy to find. Have you got that map I gave you? 
this one? Yes, that's it. See here, the main entrance to the school? Yes? Mm -hmm. Well, don't go out of there. Oh. There's a smaller entrance here, round the back. Oh, yes, I see. OK, so you go out of there, past the phone box, and then turn right into this road here, the one that goes along the side of the park. Mm -hmm. You'll see a supermarket on the left, and then it's just after that on the right. Uh -huh. It's quite a big place. You can't miss it. OK. And one more thing. Is there a post office near here? Post office? Oh, yes, of course. Just the other side of the park. Go through the middle of the park and it's there by the park entrance. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Oh, there's a good cafe near here too. Very popular with the students. Just there. You go out of the main entrance into Varley Road, then turn left at the bank and it's at the end of the street. They do amazing coffee. That's great. Thanks very much. No problem. Enjoy your course. Thanks again. Bye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a speech given to new employees at a museum. You have 30 seconds to look at questions 11 to 13. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Peter Myers, and on behalf of everybody here at Stevensbridge Dungeons, I would like to welcome you all to our entertainment team. This year, the hiring process was especially competitive, and it might interest you all to know that for every position, there were almost 30 applicants, so you really are the best of the best. In a moment, I will take you on a tour of the museum so you can get an idea of what the space is like. But first of all, I would like to show you around the staff room. Our staff room is located at the back of the building over here. You will notice that there are two entrances to the staff room. One leads to the room we're in now, which is the main and oldest dungeon here at Stevensbridge, which we have turned into the museum. This is where you will greet the new visitors and also where the tour throughout the dungeons will begin. I should mention now that we only ever send visitors through as part of a group. So even on the busy days, you will still get roughly 10 minutes of free time between each group. Make sure you use that time wisely, because you'll need to get straight back into character as soon as it's over. Now look at questions 14 to 20. Right, follow me and I'll show you the layout of the museum. From the museum, we can pass through this door near the interactive display into the staff room. From here, you can see the steps at the far side in the opposite corner that lead outside into Berwick Street. 
When you arrive for a shift, it will be much easier for you all to come in the Berwick Street entrance, directly down the steps to the staff room. If you come in through the main visitor entrance, it will take you longer to get past security. As you can all see, there are lockers on your right-hand side. Uh, they should be big enough for you to put your bags and coats in. You'll get given keys later that work with any of the lockers in here. Over on the other side, past the lockers, is our most exciting area. This is where our wardrobe and makeup will take place. Every shift, you will be transformed from normal people into grotesque medieval prisoners. If you're lucky, you get to be the jailer, but even they rarely bathed in those days. Of course, some of you might consider yourselves method actors, but please do try to shower before your shift. <laughs> We don't want to give visitors an experience that's too authentic. Now, we do have a staff shower here if you really need it. It is located next to the staff toilets, which are unisex. I hope nobody has too much of a problem with that. Unfortunately, dungeons were not really designed with comfort in mind. You can find the bathroom at the other end of the room from the makeup area. There is also another toilet for the public, concealed just to the right of the door into this room. Let's move back into the museum. We have three main sections down here. The first one you pass into when you leave the staff room is the museum. This is where all the useful information can be found such as dates, number of prisoners and the kinds of torture that we used. I know it's a lot of information to take in on your first day, but try to learn as much of it as you can. Even though you'll mostly be in character, visitors might want to ask you some questions, and it would be great if you could tell them more about the dungeons. I think it would be more interesting if visitors could learn directly from you, rather than having to read about it. As you can see, on the left we have an interactive display for children, and on the right we have a photo booth. This was the original dungeon, first built in 1435. Now, let's pass through into the main dungeon that was added during the Tudor period in around 1570. You might be able to feel that the air is a lot damper and cooler here. That is because we are now beneath the River Stevens. This is primarily the room in which most of you will be working. This is where many high-profile religious figures were held, sometimes for years on end. Depending on the roles you'll be playing, you can either be chained up, free to roam, or, if you're a jailer, wandering between prisoners to keep an eye on them. Now we will pass into our third and final section, the prison cells. Over here, you can see there are some wooden stocks and a fake gibbet. <laughs> don't worry, I can see a couple of you looking concerned. You don't need to reenact any of the torture scenes for visitors. One person each shift will play the jailer in here, where you will give a speech to the group about some of the more notable prisoners to stay here in the past. This is usually the end of the tour but some visitors will certainly want to ask you more questions at this point, so please try your best to make yourselves available. Help them by answering any questions they have. Also, feel free to guide the visitors through the museum if you see that they're going the wrong way. This concludes our introduction to your new workplace. If you'll please follow me, I will get you all issued with your keys and some information about the dungeons that you can take home with you to study. I will also introduce you to your shift supervisor, Alice Stiles, and you can ask her any questions you may have about your roles. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three.
You are going to hear a lecture about the Miner's Hotel. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Good evening and welcome to the Minor Hotel. We are pleased to have you as our guest. I will give you a brief information session to tell you everything you need to know to make this a pleasant stay. The Minor Hotel was built in the 1850s, during the Gold Rush period, also nicknaming our state the Golden State. People from all over the country and even from other countries came to seek their fortune here in these hills, creating cities overnight. In this city, many gold rush hotels soon opened up. This particular hotel was built in 1851, but was destroyed during an earthquake. It was rebuilt in 1995 to recreate the feel of the gold rush, complete with articles and actual photographs from during the 1850s. Our hotel is divided into two buildings, one called the Gold Tower, and the other is named the Fortune Tower. You will be staying in the Fortune Tower on the 25th floor, complete with great views of the city. Your room is the best room in the hotel, complete with private living room and hot tub. Here is your room card. On the card it will say FT, meaning Fortune Tower. On the bottom of the card it will say 2515. The 25 stands for the 25th floor, and the 15 stands for the 15th room on that particular floor. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. There are emergency exits in both towers of the hotel. They are located on the south side, opposite the elevators. Please use these in case of a fire or other emergency. We have some special events happening this week. Our Miner's Diner is offering a special Miner's Buffet dinner this Friday and Saturday for only $20 per person. This special includes all food, not including drinks and alcohol, and shows for the night. The buffet will be available from 5 to midnight. Because of the historical significance of our hotel, there are some special rules. The first rule is that there is no smoking allowed anywhere in the building, not even in your own room. This is not only to ensure the safety and health of our guests, but also the furniture and pictures can be easily damaged by smoke and other harsh treatment. Please remember that there are items of furniture over a hundred years old here, so respect the rules by not smoking. Secondly, please do not take pictures using a flash of any of the drawings and paintings in the rooms or hallways as they are old and fragile. We are doing our best to preserve a national treasure, so please help us in doing so. Lastly, you will only have one set of towels and bed sheets per three days. This is to conserve the water supply, as there are frequent droughts this high up in the hills. If there are any further questions, the staff of the hotel will be available to answer your questions. In the event that no one is able to answer your questions, I will also be available from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. each day in the concierge. I hope you enjoy your stay here with us. Thank you very much. That is the end of Part 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part 4. Part 4 You will hear a man talking on the radio about dogs which help people with their work. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Welcome to this week's edition of Countrywide. And today, we're taking a look at a number of different breeds of working dogs. And here to report on the dogs with jobs is Kevin Thornhill. Thanks, Joanne. Well, yes, dogs with jobs is the subject of today's program. Dogs have earned themselves a reputation over the centuries for being extremely loyal. And here's a little story which illustrates just how loyal they are. Just outside the country town of Gundagai in Australia is a statue built to commemorate a dog. A dog which sat waiting for his owner to return to the spot where he'd left him. Well... The story, which was immortalised in a song, has it that the poor dog died waiting for his master, five miles from Gundagai, which is where they built the statue. Now that's what I call loyalty. Well, because of their loyalty and also their ability to learn practical skills, dogs can be trained to do a number of very valuable jobs. Perhaps the most well-known of working dogs is the Border Collie Sheepdog. Sheepdogs which work in unison with their masters need to be smart and obedient, with a natural ability to herd sheep. Some farmers say that their dogs are so smart that they not only herd sheep, they can count them too. Another much-loved working dog is the guide dog, trained to work with the blind. Guide dogs, usually Labradors, need to be confident enough to lead their owner through traffic and crowds, but they must also be of a gentle nature. It costs a great deal of money to train a dog for this very valuable work, but the guide dog associations in the UK, America and Australia receive no government assistance, so all the money comes from donations. Another common breed of work dog is the German Shepherd. German Shepherds make excellent guard dogs and are also very appropriate as search and rescue dogs, working in disaster zones after earthquakes and avalanches. These dogs must be tough and courageous to cope with the arduous conditions of their work and so that they can be sent anywhere in the world to assist in disaster relief operations, effective dogs and their trainers are now listed on an international database. When you arrive at an airport here, you may be greeted in the baggage hall by a detector dog wearing a little red coat bearing the words quarantine. These dogs are trained to sniff out fresh fruit as well as meat and even live animals hidden in people's bags. In order to be effective, a good detector dog must have an enormous food drive. In other words, they must really love their food. At Sydney Airport, where there are 10 detector dogs working full time, they stop about 80 people a month trying to bring illegal goods into the country. And according to their trainers, they very rarely get it wrong. Another famous working dog is the Husky. Huskies, which originally came from Siberia, have been used for decades as a means of transport on snow, particularly in Antarctica where they have played an important role. Huskies are well adapted to harsh conditions and they enjoy working in a team. But the Huskies have all left Antarctica now because the International Treaty prohibits their use in the territory as they are not native animals. Many people were sad to see the dogs leave Antarctica, as they had been vital to the early expeditions and earned their place in history along with the explorers. That is the end of part four. 
You now have half a minute to check your answers.